that means you're not going to add the extra 20 kilos of muscle you want to because it's just like where's the 20 kilos coming from you don't just like inhale and then boom you're jacked like the energy has to come from somewhere so i worked with a guy before who was very stalled in his progress um he was stalled in his physique he was stalled in his lifts and he weighed he weighed about 60 kilos or about 130 pounds at 59 um i actually know the centimeters for that because i'm 59 i'm not a 6 foot uh person i was going to chad there we go i'm not a 6 foot chad so that's 175 centimeters and most of this came from a fear of being fat and so he tried this main gaining approach which has been really 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 popular um, and has kind of surfaced as an approach that a lot of people are using to get uh, results and because he was running this approach prior to working with me he just was completely stalled and found no success since then we've been able to actually introduce him to a proper strategy when it comes to making results and he's the most jacked and the most lean he's ever been in his entire life. And he actually is weighing close to 135 now. So you could call it main gaining, but really it wasn't. So let's break this down. The main gaining trap, that's what I'm going to call it. I'm not a fan of main gaining as a general approach. Um, but before we kind of break down why that is, let's actually discuss my definition. Let's define what main gaining is so it's when you eat at maintenance or a bulk a very 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 slight bulk of about 100 calorie surplus to recomp to a lower body fat percentage or only gain muscle over the long term so that's what the definition is so for reference 100 calorie surplus is 100 grams of weight gain per week um, which sounds like it should be a right approach. Um, so what's actually wrong with this? Well, before I kind of do that, let's give some positives towards main gaining. Because turns out a lot of these approaches, they exist on a continuum, right? It's like, what is your goal? What do you need to do to achieve that? And anything between the, what you need to do and what you can do, it's a scale of optimality. So there's some truths to main gaining. And I want to just clarify those really quickly. So we have recomposition, body recomposition is possible under certain conditions. There's no doubt about that. That is something that is possible and is achievable. And those conditions are, I've done a whole episode on body recomposition, by the way, um, if you're interested. But if you are new to training, if you are fairly overweight, or you are new to scientific training and dieting. So you can train for like a year, but if you're not training like scientifically and then you start training scientifically, boom, you can start to recomp. But generally, if you're experienced, you're already lean and you've been dieting and training for a while, like scientifically, recomp just isn't a, a good option. But still, it's possible. And obviously, when we gain weight, we want to gain with a good P ratio. Really quickly, what is P ratio? So if I decided I'm going to gain one kilo, right, and I want, and, sorry, 50% of that was was muscle and 50% of that was fat, my P ratio was 0.5 or 50%. So P ratio is just an expression of, it's more of a conceptual expression of the muscle to fat ratio that you gain, right? So if you... If you had a perfect P ratio in a perfect world, which does not exist and will never exist, you would gain every 100% muscle, every kilo of body weight you gain. Like, could you imagine that? You could just force feed yourself McDonald's for like two weeks and pizzas and just eat whatever you want, gain like 20 kilos and all of it be muscle. Oh my God, I wish this world existed, to be honest. Man, I would have, God, if I could choose to gain 20 kilos of muscle... What is one body part that I would specifically focus on gaining that muscle? It's a side tangent. But honestly, imagine just like showing up like school holidays. Brother, it's time to get big, brother, you know? And it's just like smashing on this food and you only train like legs. So you come back and just 20 kilos of muscle straight on your legs. Everyone's like, what is going on? 
okay, I'm getting creative right now. I'm going to get back on track. But yes, like obviously we want to, when we gain weight, we want it to be the best ratio. So that's not, it's not about like trying to dismiss that because it should be, it should be a consideration and muscle gain is slow. And so we should train and diet without being too aggressive. Like if, if, if you gain a kilo of muscle in, a, in let's say three months, then why doesn't it make sense to not gain any more weight than you need to? Like if you're going to gain a kilo of muscle, no matter what, over a certain time frame, do you want to add five kilos or 10 kilos, you know, because like what's going to be left is just a bunch of extra body fat. And so it makes sense that we do things slow and come up with a good approach to maximize the efforts that we put in because that's important. But there are some unfortunate downsides to main game, which need to be addressed, which let's get into those right now. You can't, this is a quote that I love. Um, I use it all the time with people who are just scared to get, like, to gain weight. You can't carve a sculpture out of a pebble, right? Like, the, this, the, the craftsman doesn't go up to the lake, pick up a rock, and go, you know what, I'm going to make the best sculpture out of this. It starts with a big slab of rock, which he drags into these, like, his place, his sculpting place. And he chips that away for like years, right? And so if you want to be as muscular as you can be, you're going to need to put some size on. There's no way around it, unfortunately. And like you're not going to get to like 180 pounds or 80 kilos jacked from like 140 or 60 kilos. You've just got to gain weight. Like there's no way around it. Like you can sit at, you can main gain and just sit at like maintenance forever that means you're not going to add the extra 20 kilos of muscle you want to because it's just like, where's the 20 kilos coming from? You don't just like inhale and then boom, you're jacked. Like the energy has to come from somewhere and it comes from food. And so these are important considerations. It's like, if you want to look like, if you want to look like, 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 like a shredded fitness model or fe- not fitness model, like Instagram kind of like bodybuilder style, kind of um, like that popular kind of gym shark look, it's like they weigh more than 60 kilos, 70 kilos. Unless you're like 5'4". So this is going to be... Look, I think Pete Hartwig is a great guy, okay? But he's short. And that's why on stage, shredded, he weighs like 70 kilos. But then again, that's him like with like dick skin shredded kind of like leanness. And so... You've just like, even like, even at 5'4", to look like Pete Hartwig, which is like an IFBB pro from like Brisbane area, which is where I'm from. He's off season, he weighs like 84 kilos. And so you've still got to put like size on. There's no way around it. Thank you for your attention in this podcast. If you want to learn a bit more about Fit Big Strong, we have an Instagram page where you can go check out. So if you head over to Instagram and type in Fit Big Strong, it will take you to our page And we post a lot of unique and fresh Instagram content uh, in the form of reels. So 10 to 30 second short clips, which are straight to the point. Um, If you want to head over there and support us by giving us a follow, um, hopefully we return the value with the type of content we produce. Um, If that's something you're interested in, again, head over to Instagram, uh, type in at FitBigStrong and thank you in advance. So like the approach of main gaining is just really inefficient. That's another key point. Like when you bulk, let's say you go from like maintenance calories, which is not super anabolic. And then that increase in calories is actually directly anabolic. You know, your body isn't fighting to save resources. It has extra resources and it uses those resources in things that are secondary, which is gaining muscle. And so if you're not in a a large enough calorie surplus, you're not going to see that significant boost. And I don't think 100 calorie surplus is like game changingly significant. And so a better recommendation is like maybe 200 to 300 calorie surplus. And if you want to be like super precise, doing like a body weight um, uh, measurement is an, is, is another option. So for example, 0.25 to 0.5 percent of your body weight per week. Let's do some math right now. If I weigh 
60 kilos, 0.25 is like, it's 150 grams. And so aim to like gain 150 grams of weight per week. And that's more than a hundred calorie surplus. That's actually about 150. So even if you're light, you know, the lowest end that I'm recommending that you should gain at, because if you're light, you're also probably a beginner, is still above 100 calories, 150 calories. That's the minimum if you weigh 60 kilos. And so you can go anywhere up to 0.5 is the highest cutoff. So when we talk about gaining too much weight, anything above that 0.5% is probably going to be too much. So that's kind of like a range to see like a solid boost. Anything like it's almost like a it's almost like a switch where you need like a minimum threshold to see like a big boost, and then you ride that out and you get awesome gains. But anything past that, you've kind of already flicked the switch, and you're not going to get like a crazy more amount of gains. So, for example, if I decided to gain uh, five kilos in four months, right? I might gain two kilos of muscle. I'm making this up. This is more a conception. But then let's decide in that same time point. I'm going to gain like 10 kilos of muscle. No, no, sorry, 10 kilos of body weight. And now what's happened is I might gain four kilos of muscle. Sorry, no, three kilos of muscle. And so the ratio is off. Even though I just spent all this time gaining an extra five fucking kilos. Like that's why 0.25 to 0.5 is a good range. It's a good weight gain rate, especially if you're a beginner to see that boost. And so keep that in mind. And so... In this range, right, I think it's probably, you're probably going to have a similar P ratio, even if you did like a 100 calorie surplus. So you can spend like a year to gain like two kilos or, and you might gain a kilo of muscle, which is great. But if you just stuck to these recommendations, you might gain, you might have a similar P ratio. You might have like generally 50% is a good P ratio. You might get like 45%. And gain like four kilos of muscle. Like that's a like that, that's a four times increase in muscle for like such a significant less amount of fat gain. And so keep that in mind. Like it's like you get a higher muscle gain rate with a similar P ratio. This is one of like this is a really big point. So food labels and tracking, it's accurate to plus or minus a hundred calories anyway. Like think about that. Like, you scan a food label in MyFitnessPal, you track 2,400 calories. Based on the accuracy of the labels, because companies have a level of accuracy they can submit, you might either be having 2,300 or 2,500. There's literally no way to tell because that's just the accuracy. And so if you're aiming for a 100-calorie surplus, you could literally be eating at maintenance or you could be in a 200-calorie surplus. How the hell are you going to know? You just don't like that's just the reality of the situation is that like people like it's funny when people even track to like the gram guess what man i'm sorry but it's just not accurate to that like that's a coping mechanism and if you're tracking to the gram and trying to stay lean you've probably got something you need to work through key point like it's literally accurate to plus or minus 100 gram like 100 calories and so that's just how it is And the biggest point when it comes to main gaining, this is what I said at the start with my definition, is people think that if you gain super, super slow, you will only gain muscle, which unfortunately, that's not true. Unfortunately, for anybody in the world, if you're on a million grams of gear or not, you will never have a 100% muscle gain rate, ever. Like a good, like like if you've got good genetics, it's probably going to be half and half. That's just the reality. And so you need to get over this fear of gaining body fat because to get to where you want to, you need to be slightly uncomfortable for a small period of time. And why are you even uncomfortable? Like, who cares? Like, if you were fat before and then you cut down and now you're worried, I can understand that a little bit. But no, like, you can stop any time. You can just go like, you know, I'm getting too fat, just cut. And you need to be objective about it because you'll just stay nowhere. But the point is, like, no one's forcing you to do this. You can take things slow, 0.25% body weight per week, see awesome, awesome gains. And then, like, 
after 16 weeks, four months, you know, maybe you're feeling a little bit too chubby, you might have some soft abs, you can just do a cut and lose all the body fat you gained and none of the muscle. And so, like, people do need to get over this fear. And that's just what it comes down to. And so, let's, what's the take-home points, right? You've come through this whole podcast episode or YouTube episode and it's like, what's the go? Well, the leanest, most muscular version of you will undergo bulking and cutting cycles. There's no way around it. And this version of you didn't main gain to his ideal physique, right? And so you you need to understand the trade-offs if you are going to main gain. You know, like you need to understand that like, it's not optimal. You're not making the best gains you could. You might actually be making no gains in some cases if you're lean enough. And so if you want a certain result, you need to overcome the fears to get there. Simple as that. 